So this year, Volkswagen got a little bit greedy, and no, I'm not talking about that whole diesel thing. It decided to give itself not one, but two 40th birthday presents to mark four decades of the Golf GTI. The Club Sport, which I've got here, and the Club Sport S. Of course, we love our hot hatches here at Auto Trader. You might remember we did an absolute mega test with all 10 of them recently. You can see that by clicking on the link there. But we're here to test these two more hardcore versions of what's normally a much more friendly, cuddly hot hatch, the GTI. We'll be driving the Club Sport out on the road here around the circuit and the S on the track where it's just broken the record for the fastest front wheel drive car there is. And the man who set that record will be driving with us. So we find ourselves in Germany and in the Club Sport GTI, a car built to celebrate that birthday, but also to give the GTI a bit of an image upgrade. In the current crop of performance hatches, it was starting to look a little bit more like a school run special than a hot lap contender. But the Club Sport is here to change that image. So it's been given a power boost. The EA888 engine goes up to 261 brake horsepower as standard. But even that's unlikely to worry the fastest Fords, Hondas and Renaults at the moment. So because VW is aware of that, if you flatten the throttle for 10 seconds, you get an overboost and that pushes the maximum output to 286 brake horsepower, exactly the same as the Seat Leon Cupra. And it actually works fairly well in practice too. There have also been some tweaks and more downforce both at the front and the back, more at the rear in fact to keep the car nice and neutral at all times. And the steering has definitely been given an extra bit of sensation and weight that you really do feel through the corners. So not only can you carry more speed than you can in the standard GTI, you also get much more of a sensation of what those front tyres are up to all the time. Each response to your input here on the steering wheel is just that little bit quicker. Having said that though, it actually just feels like the GTI amplified, so you've got more power, it's more rorty, more immediate, but it's still lovely and supple. You've still got adjustable dampers which you can put into comfort mode, it'll still be very relaxing and pretty refined too, and you've still got back seats, unlike you do in the Club Sport S. And that means it's just as usable, pretty much, as a standard GTI. The only problem is the Golf R, which is only a few hundred pounds more expensive, but has four-wheel drive, has more power all the time, not just on overboost. So we'd probably still say that the R is the pick of the Golf range over this club sport, despite its zany looks and aero kit. And that is exactly where the Club Sport S comes in. Yes, this is officially the meanest, most powerful Golf ever put into production, with 306 brake horsepower, a brand new exhaust system, 30 kilos shed in weight, and a set of semi-slick Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres. It's had suspension changes to help it corner as flat and hard as possible, and there is an individual drive profile set up designed for pushing the fastest possible Nürburgring lap. In this case, an unbelievable 7 minutes and 49 seconds. But what's it like out on that very track where it set that time? So here we are in slightly unfamiliar surroundings in the world's most powerful Golf GTI and the world's fastest front wheel drive car around this, the Nürburgring Nordschleife. We've told you a little bit about the changes the VW have made to the Club Sport to turn it into this S with 306 brake horsepower. But now we get to tell you what those changes feel like as Benny Lecter leads us around the Nürburgring to do a couple of flying laps. It's my first time here at this incredibly famous circuit and it's going to be a real treat taking this car through some of these famous corners at this seriously demanding racetrack. I think the first thing to say would be that this thing still feels very much like a Golf GTI. So it's still actually, even though they've stripped out a lot of weight, it now weighs just 1,285 kilos without the driver. It doesn't feel like a hardcore circuit only car. The Nürburgring mode on the adjustable dampers puts everything else into race but leaves the suspension in comfort and that's to soak up all the bumps on this track and make sure that the wheels stay in as much contact with the road surface as possible. And it actually feels really supple particularly when we've been running it over some of these huge curbs and through the carousel. It's also, as you'd expect, much faster than a normal GTI. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 5.8 seconds. That's half a second quicker than the Club Sport. And it goes on to an unlimited top speed of 165 miles an hour. But they've set the car up to be as neutral to drive fast as possible. 
So if anything, there's no perfect car to learn this circuit on. They wanted more aerodynamic downforce at the back than at the front. Different toe angles and suspension, and that's all to make sure it stays nice and neutral when you're on the brakes and on turn in and lift off, all that stuff. Which means even a novice like me can feel like they're getting the most out of it. But the guy up front who set this lap record is certainly not hanging around. There's so much grip from these Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires and 19 inch alloys though. You can really exploit that too. For a front wheel drive car, it's fantastically stable under brakes and they've changed the brakes, put some different material on the pads so that they resist fade better. And they've changed the pots in the calipers just to give you better feel for that initial pedal push. And they really work too. It's certainly not as hardcore as a Civic Type R, but it's pretty damn fast. It's even more impressive that it's done this time of 7 minutes, 49 seconds and 21 hundredths, which is 1.4 seconds quicker than the Type R and 37 seconds quicker than just a standard performance pack GTI. The composure at high speed and in corners is so impressive. You've got a lot of grip, but when it runs out, it's not going to bite you. Which for someone like me is pretty good news. You get a lot more feel through the steering than you do in the standard car though. And you know how much grip you've got left to play with. Woo. These corners just keep coming one after another after another. But it's amazing to experience some of what it must have felt like in this car to set that incredible lap which is obviously something pretty alien to most GTIs. But that was our flying lap in the Club Sport S. And I have to say, it's just been incredible how tameable, how easy this car is to drive. It's not been intimidating at all. And it certainly flatters someone like me. And it's really impressive to think that something as humble as every day as the GTI can be made to do something this impressive with just a few changes to the engineering. Yeah, as adrenaline rushes go, driving the Nürburgring at that sort of speed is a pretty big one.